Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we are going to take a look at turn on methods of SCR. The link for the material will be provided in the description and you can download it for your reference. So let's get started. So what do you understand by the term turn on methods of SCR? The methods that are associated for turning on the SCR is basically turn on methods, isn't it? So when we talk about turn on methods, there are different methods. But in my previous video, I mentioned that this particular equation that is derived from two transistor model of SCR, the anode current expression will play a very important role in these turn on methods. So how does that happen is what we are also going to see. So what are the various methods that are currently available to turn on SCR? So there are five methods. The first and foremost method and the popularly used method is gate triggering method. So what are we going to do in gate triggering method? So if you refer some textbooks, they will directly give you some statements, but you need to understand why are those statements given. So if you consider this equation, for example, and I will be considering an SCR. So let us write the symbol of SCR. You have a gate terminal, you have an anode terminal and you have a cathode terminal. So as and when you apply gate voltage, say VG. So as gate voltage is increased or you start supplying gate voltage, what happens? The current IG increases. This we have seen in static characteristics, isn't it? So as the value of IG is increasing, what will happen? IG is directly related with respect to IA in this equation. As IG is increasing, obviously IA will increase. So can we write IA is also increasing? So basically by increasing the gate voltage, the anode current is increasing. So what does that mean? So for example, the device is in forward blocking mode and you apply gate voltage, the gate current increases and the anode current increases. That means the current flowing through this device that is the anode current will increase. So as this quantity is increasing, the device will move from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode and the SCR is turned on. So with the help of gate supply, we are able to turn on the SCR. So that is why it is called as gate triggering. What is the second method? Thermal triggering. If you carefully observe, thermal is something that is related with temperature. So the temperature, with the help of temperature rise, we will be able to trigger the SCR. Sounds different, isn't it? But it is possible. Now, let us assume the leakage current, say ICBO1 or ICBO2, depending upon the quantity that are there. So let us say the leakage current is increasing. Because of the leakage current increase due to some reasons in the circuit, consequently the temperature will increase. As the temperature is increased, again the leakage current will increase. This is actually a cumulative process. And because of leakage current rising again, temperature will again increase. So this process continues and beyond some point in time, what will happen is that the SCR will be turned on. So this method is called as thermal triggering. So with the help of rise in temperature, we will be able to turn on the SCR. So basically leakage current is associated with the term ICBO1 and ICBO2, isn't it? So as these terms are continuously increasing, obviously the anode current will increase. Because of the anode current increasing, as the temperature increases, the anode current increases, the SCR is actually turned on. So this is not a preferable method, isn't it? At some point in time, self-destruction of the device might take place and that process is called as thermal runaway. So thermal runaway means self-destruction of an SCR or any device for that matter, the definition is applicable. Now the third method is forward voltage triggering. This we would have already seen. So we have three junctions, junction J1, junction J2 and junction J3. And you're applying some amount of voltage and positive is connected to P type, negative is connected to N type, junction J1 and J3 are forward biased and junction J2 is reverse biased. So when junction J2 is reversed by us, now what we will be doing is we will inject more amount of charge carriers in this region by increasing this particular voltage, this supply. So basically we will call this as VAK. So as VAK is increased beyond a certain value, say breakover voltage, forward breakover voltage, then what will happen? The device moves from 
forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode because at this point in time breakdown of junction J2 takes place and junction J2 which was reversed biased becomes forward biased and because of this the SCR is turned on. So SCR is turned on by increasing the anode to cathode voltage and this method is called as forward voltage triggering method. Again this is not a preferable method as it might damage the device because you are applying dangerously high values of voltages and the current will also be very very high and that is why this is also not a preferable method. So what is the next method then? So we have something called as light triggering method. So you might have known by now with the help of light we will be able to trigger this particular device. So how is it possible? We need to have VAK. So this is mandatory. We definitely need to have this irrespective of the circuit. So once this is there and you apply light to this particular junction. So when you're having light radiations falling on the junction PN over here, that is basically junction J2. So J1 and J3 are already forward biased, but junction J2 is not forward biased, isn't it? It is reverse biased when you're supplying like this. So in order to turn on J2 or in order to inject more amount of charge carriers in junction J2, what we will be doing is we will be supplying some amount of light radiations. And because of this, more will be the charge carriers that are injected in junction J2. So as more charge carriers are injected in junction J2, obviously J2 will be forward biased. So as junction J2 is forward biased, the device will be moving from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode. So for light triggering method, there are specifically devices that are designed, which is called as LASCR. So this is called as light activated semi-controlled rectifier. So these are popularly used in HVDC applications. So we don't use it everywhere. We only use it in HVDC applications as it is more economical over there. So we have seen four methods till now. What is the fifth method? So this is called as DV by DT triggering. So what is DV by DT triggering? So let us consider an equivalent circuit representation of an SCR with respect to junctions. So we will be having three junctions, isn't it? And I will be connecting it to positive and negative terminal of the battery. So you have junction J1, which will be short circuited and junction J3 will be short circuited because we are already applying voltage VAK. But we need to ensure junction J2 is also short circuited because it is acting as open switch. So for that we used light triggering and we also used many other methods previously. To inject more amount of charge carriers in J2. But if you carefully observe this, this will actually act as a capacitor. So you have one plate here and you have one plate here and junction J2 is basically the dielectric material. So now because of this dielectric that is there, we can say that it has the property of a capacitor. So for capacitor can we say I is equal to C into dV by dt? So this is very much understood, isn't it? As we increase the value of dV by dt, the rate of change of voltage as we increase this by some method. So what will happen? More will be the current injected. So more will be, so I is directly proportional to Q. So more will be the charge carriers injected. And when more charge carriers are injected, the width of J2, that means the depletion width of J2 will be reduced, isn't it? So as the width of J2 is reduced, what will happen? This junction becomes the dielectric material region becomes very narrow and consequently what will happen? This becomes forward biased and the current starts flowing from J1 to J3. So with the help of dV by dt, by increasing the value of dV by dt, we are able to ensure that the SCR is turned on. And that is why this is one more method in which we can turn on the SCR through the property of capacitor. For now, you can remember there are five different methods and what are those methods and how do we analyze these methods is what is taught in this video. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of various turn on methods of SCR. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do like it, share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates.